Well, I'd like to uh, join my voice with uh, Pastor Christian and Chitty in wishing you all a, a happy new year. And uh, my word, what a year we have had in 2020. Uh, like no other year that uh, this world has had, I think, in terms of the plague. They have had plagues in history, but not as extensive and not as quick spreading as corona, coronavirus uh, has been in 2020. And it seems like we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, it seems like the plague is still with us. And uh, in some areas, it's getting worse. Uh, so we don't know what bodes for the future. And uh, those are kind of things that you and I cannot change or do anything about except uh, to obey orders and to follow the rules and regulations of the new normal that uh, we all have become accustomed to. But um, even if things do get worse, the fact is that you can become a better you in 2021. And that's what I would like to have a look at to see what areas of renewal that we can have as individuals, as a church, um, areas that we can find that we can possibly get New Year's resolutions and apply them to ourselves. Um, it's New Year and we just wished each other a happy New Year. Uh, on the 1st of January was uh, the New Year. Where some of us saw the, uh, the New Year celebrations uh, on the TV screen and if you didn't sit up uh, late at night, uh, you would have looked, seen that on, on the TV screen the next morning, uh, the fireworks in Sydney and so on. But um, if you were an Israelite, you wouldn't be celebrating New Year on the 1st of January. Um, the, the world today goes mainly by the calendar that we go by but there are some countries that have a different system of dating. And uh, the Israelites uh, celebrated their new year, guess when? On the first day of spring. Isn't that a good time to start a new year? Uh, here we are celebrating a new year in the middle of summer. Uh, but the Israelites were a people of the land and they worked the land and they knew the seasons. And um, so they started their new year on, on the first day of spring because then you'd have spring, summer, autumn, and then winter. Uh, the winter. And that all made sense, uh, starting the new year on, uh, in spring when everything comes to new life and everything starts and uh, uh, life starts and so on. So... Uh, Maybe we can pretend to be Israelites this morning and pretend that this is spring and uh, we can see every new life coming, coming to, everything coming to new life in the world as well as our own selves and our own selves taking on new life for us. And of course, uh, the, uh, the first month of the Jewish calendar was Nisan. And... Um, on the 15th of Nisan was when? Was what? The celebration of the Jewish Passover. And of course that was the most important uh, festival that the Jews celebrated. And it looked back to when God led them out to the land of Egypt. And um, one of the plagues was the plague of death. The angel of death passed over those homes that had the blood of the lamb uh, painted on the doorways and, uh, and so the firstborn of those homes was not killed by the angel of death and so they celebrated the exodus under Moses and the deliverance that God had given to them uh, from Egypt as slaves in Egypt and uh, the festival of Passover uh, looked back to that event so here was uh, the first thing that the Israelites would remember was that great deliverance of God uh, for them as a nation, taking them out as slaves in Egypt 
and establishing them in the promised land uh, where they were uh, celebrating, where they were living. And of course, another name for the month of Nisan is sometimes referred to in Scripture as Abib or Aviv, uh, which is merely the Hebrew name for spring. It's not actually the name of a month, but it's just uh, the name for spring. And, uh, but sometimes the, the month of Nisan is referred to in Bible as Abib. So here we can also um, celebrate that Jesus has delivered us uh, from the land of slavery to sin and has, is leading us to uh, the new and promised land that he will take us to on that day that he comes again. And I'm longing for the day when we can celebrate communion together again. Uh, we didn't celebrate communion at all last year because of uh, the plague. And uh, we should uh, uh, work out a time and, and a way in which we can celebrate communion together because it is a very important uh, sacrament, if you want to call it that. And then 50 days after Passover was uh, Pentecost or Shavuot, as the uh, Hebrew people call it. Pentecost is the Greek name, which means 50. Uh, 50 days from the Passover, uh, they celebrated uh, Pentecost. And that was because it was supposed to have taken 50 days for the Hebrew people to have traveled from Egypt all the way to Mount Sinai, where the law was given. And Pentecost was meant to celebrate the giving of the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. Uh, other portions of Scripture will tell you that it took three months for them to get there. But maybe because they were aware of the uh, agricultural calendar, uh, uh, for practical purposes they brought Pentecost a bit more forward so that it would be 50 days after Passover that they celebrated the, uh, the festival of Pentecost. The second pilgrim feast of the three pilgrim feasts of the uh, Jewish people. Uh, the Feast of Tabernacles being the third pilgrim feast uh, of, of the Jewish people, of the Israelite people in the Bible. But AD 31, a whole new meaning came to Pentecost. There they were celebrating the giving of the law uh, on Mount Sinai in Jerusalem in 31 AD uh, when uh, the Holy Spirit was poured out on, on the disciples and they went out from there and uh, preached the gospel in the streets of Jerusalem and uh, 3,000 souls were baptized and we have the birth of the Christian church on the day of Pentecost, AD 31. One could say that uh, on the, on the uh, first Pentecost in Israel at the, Mount, at the foot of Mount Sinai was the birth of the Old Testament church or the birth of the nation of Israel, because that's when they started as a nation under God at that time. And Pentecost 31 AD is the birth of the Christian church. So here again is uh, uh, the idea of renewal in these institutions that God has given to us in the Bible. Of course, these have now, the festivals have now come to an end because they all pointed forward to Jesus, and Jesus has come. And so there's no longer any need to celebrate uh, these uh, festivals of the Bible uh, in the Old Testament. In 1770, um, Captain Cook was sailing up the east coast of Australia on the day of Pentecost. And uh, he came across some islands and uh, he... Um, navigated his way through those islands and uh, because it was the day of Pentecost he called them the Whitsundays. We actually have a man from the Whitsunday sitting over there in the pews. Uh, he lives on the Whitsundays. Uh, can you raise your hand please Terry so that we can see what a man looks like from the Whitsundays. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Terry. Uh, I've made a great mistake. But it's somewhere out in the islands over there, pretty close by, I think. And uh, Hamilton Island, is it, uh, Terry? 
Lord, how I don't know. I was getting it right at last, uh, eventually. <laughs> and, uh, but why did he call them the Whitsundays? What does Whitsunday mean anyway? Well, it was the Brits uh, and their way of naming things their own way. And uh, the Brits called uh, Pentecost Whitsunday. So why Whitsunday? Well, Whitsunday stands for White Sunday. And on the day of Pentecost, it was tradition in the Christian church uh, to, to baptize people because of that first Pentecostal Sunday in the New Testament. 3,000 souls were baptized, so it became tradition in the Christian church to baptize people on the day of Pentecost. And the baptismal candidates wore white robes. And so it was called Whit Sunday, White Sunday. So Pentecost changed its name to Whit Sunday. Uh, so there again we have um, a, a, a nice idea of uh, adding people to the church uh, on the day of Pentecost. Um, we sort of have fell, fallen behind on, on that uh, respect uh, and uh, possibly should be um, uh, aiming at baptizing people on the day of Pentecost and looking for people uh, so that they can be baptized on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost also was a day of unity uh, that we find in the New Testament because uh, we had people from all over the Mediterranean world coming to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of Pentecost. And you had people from uh, North Africa, from Rome, from Persia, uh, from Arabia, uh, let alone all the people that were inside Israel coming to Jerusalem uh, to celebrate uh, Pentecost, as they did for Passover and uh, the uh, uh, Feast of Tabernacles. But uh, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, uh, one of the things that happened was that the disciples spoke in tongues. And when they spoke in tongues, everyone heard them speaking in their own language. So here we have a coming together in unity of people all hearing the same message, even though uh, they were actually speaking in different languages, and maybe it was the gift of hearing that they had more than the gift of languages. Uh, and uh, people began to hear the message uh, or the same with everybody, no matter what language group they belonged to. You remember that uh, when languages were divided at the uh, Tower of Babel, uh, it was because of the rebellion and sin of the people that God gave them different languages in case there was this unity of rebellion against God and... Um, uh, God then uh, divided them up into different languages. But here at Pentecost we find a reversal taking place where people are coming together and uh, hearing everything in the same language. So here's a message of unity and peace and harmony that uh, we as Christians can promote uh, during the year 2021 uh, as we are filled with the Holy Spirit and I pray that uh, the promised infilling of the Holy Spirit uh, in the church can take place as God has promised under the angel of Revelation chapter 18. The other thing is that uh, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus said to them, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So here they were witnesses because they had the power of the Holy Spirit in them. It gave them courage to talk about Jesus and to invite people to give their lives to him. And maybe that too can be one of our New Year's resolutions, and that is to have the courage to go out and to tell the gospel message to people who may be searching for that truth. As time went by, um, baptism uh, transferred itself from the baptism of adults to the baptism of children and babies and infants. 
And uh, this beca was because the church wrongly began to believe that the sacrament of baptism itself was the thing that saved you. Um, instead of the fact that it is faith in Jesus that saves you, and the sacrament of baptism is a confession of that faith that we have in Jesus. So uh, the Latin word ex opere operato, uh, which means that uh, the sacrament not only signifies the thing that is being signified, but it actually makes it effective. Uh, and so the belief came that actually it is baptism that saves you. And if you, didn't, if you weren't baptized, you wouldn't be saved. So the idea came that we should be baptizing infants and babies in the church. But the other thing that came with that um, is a ceremony called uh, christening, and, uh, which accompanied baptism. Uh, at the christening service or the baptismal service, you were christened with a new name, a Christian name, and given uh, a Christian name. And we, uh, in, in, time, in my day, uh, we, we, were, uh, we, we called our first name the, our Christian names. But nowadays we call it our first name. And, um, but uh, that is a biblical idea as well, the christening idea. Taking on the name of Christ and calling yourself Christian. And not being ashamed of that, but proclaiming uh, Christ to the people that you meet uh, anywhere, any, any time. So there's something too that we can do, and that is to be not ashamed of taking on the name Christian, because when we were bapt baptized, we did take on the name of Christ, uh, and we were renamed Christ uh, at our baptismal service. It's biblical because... Uh, we have examples uh, for us in the case of Abraham, who is named Abraham. We have uh, Jacob, who is named Israel. We have uh, Simon, who is named Peter. And we have uh, Saul, who was renamed uh, Paul. And we have many other cases as well. But uh, in these cases, God himself was the one who gave the person the new name. You remember when Jesus first met uh, Simon, when Andrew, his brother, brought Jesus to uh, brought uh, Pete Simon to meet Jesus. Uh, when Jesus met him, uh, Jesus says to him, "You are Simon, the son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter." Cephas is the Aramaic name, and Peter is the Greek name, and they both mean rock. So here Jesus himself, when he, when he first meets Peter, he changes his name and says, You are Simon, you will be called Peter. You are, you will be. And uh, that is the promise that Jesus gives to us today as well. He changes us from whoever we are and whatever we are to something new. And Jesus gives us a new name. I think of um, the famous uh, name change. Um, uh, it's amazing that this morning in the Sabbath school as well, uh, Baal was talking about uh, names as well. And it seems like it's providential that this has come together. Um, we, coming from Africa... Um, the names of people in, Af in, in the African uh, uh, languages, they have meaning in the current language. Uh, whereas in our culture, uh, my name is David, but I don't know what the name David means unless I go to the dictionary and find out what the meaning of David means. And, uh, and that is the case with, with most of our names uh, in the Western culture. We wouldn't know what that name means unless we go and find out from the dictionary what it means. But in, in the African cultures, uh, the name has a meaning in the current language. Uh, we had a, a little boy 
the other day, his name was Kofi, and uh, he read the Ten Commandments for us up here in church the other day. Uh, what does Kofi mean? Do, do you know, Chidi? Uh, maybe it's not the not not Nigerian name, uh, but Kofi means uh, born on Friday, and uh, he must have been born on Friday to have the name Kofi. And of course, the most famous Kofi that we know is Kofi Annan. Uh, I grew up with uh, my friend, uh, Makam Daga. Uh, he was the guy who was beaten with the stick as we were running <laughs> along to, be, uh, to, for the, to jump into the river. Uh, his name was Makam Daga, uh, shortened to Makam Daga. And what does that mean? It means dirty boy. How do you like the name Dirty Boy? <laughs> uh, but he is my friend. And uh, we also, I also had a friend by the name of Strelo, uh, which means the one who asks. And he was constantly asking me for things. And it's amazing how uh, the name actually fitted uh, the personality and character of that, of that, of that person. And... Um, uh, before I left uh, South Africa, uh, I worked with uh, uh, a team of uh, chainsaw operators um, and um, that was uh, at the end of my farming, uh, I worked on a research station there. Um, and uh, there were 100 ladies uh, collecting wood from the forest. We were getting charcoal, getting wattle wood for charcoal. And uh, I had seven chainsaw operators and a hundred ladies working uh, in teams getting the wood out of the, uh, out of the forest. And um, in the African culture, you can be sure they always give you a name. Uh, you, you might not know what the name means or what that name uh, is, uh, but, but you can be sure they'll give you a name. And that name actually fits your character and, and how you operate, uh, and, and uh, the essential you is actually revealed in that name that they gave you. And uh, I knew that I had a name uh, before I came over to this side of the world, and I did find out what it was. It was Gatjeni. And uh, uh, Gatjeni means tribesman or clansman, and that was a great honor that was given to me probably one of the greatest honors given to me uh, by, by the African people. <clears throat> so yes, uh, names mean things. And uh, the name of Jesus means what? It's the same as the name Joshua in the Old Testament. Jesus is the Greek uh, form of, of Joshua. So what does that mean? Remember the angels when they sang above the hills of Bethlehem? They told Mary and Joseph to give him a certain name and his name was to be Jesus because Jesus means God saves and uh, that's in fact who Jesus was. He was God and he was the saviour of the world. So I think of, um, of Jacob and the experience that he had. Um, you remember Jacob and what, what does the word Jacob mean? It means cheat. It means uh, fraudster. It means trickster. And when you read the life of Jacob, that's exactly what he was. <laughs> he was a cheat. He was a fraudster. He was a trickster. Uh, he took the birthright away from uh, from his brother Esau and uh, he took the blessing away from his brother Esau as well and when he worked for his father-in-law Laban uh, he also seemed to be tricking him uh, out of many things uh, but also Laban actually caught him out on a few things as well uh, namely uh, Rachel and Leah. Uh, Laban said to him okay you work for seven years uh, for my da daughter Rachel, and you can have her. So Jacob works for seven years, and lo and behold, uh, he finds that he's married to Leah. Uh, it was kind of dark, and in in the, in the, in the, probably in the evening, he didn't see too well. Uh, next minute, when he wakes up in the morning, hello, it's Leah here, not Rachel. So he gets tricked by Laban as well, 
And so he goes back to Laban and he says, hey, what have you done over here? And, uh, and Laban says, okay, all right, if you work for another seven years, you can have uh, Rachel because our tradition is that we give the eldest daughter first and then, then we give the second daughter. Oh, says uh, 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 Jacob, I didn't know that. Uh, and so uh, he gets tricked as well. Uh, so it's an interesting story. But through all the trickery that Jacob was involved in, he comes back uh, to the land of Canaan because God has directed him there and God has been with him through all his trickery and fraudulent activity. Uh, he has not forgotten God and God still directs him uh, back to the land of Canaan. And then he realizes that Esau is on the way with 400 armed men to come and meet him. Well, that can only mean one thing, and that is that Esau is coming back to take revenge uh, on uh, my trickery, and uh, my life is now hanging in, in balance, and, and it's in danger. And so he has that famous wrestling match with God, other side, the Jabbok River, on that dark night uh, that we are familiar with. And uh, in that wrestling with the angel of God, who is none other than Jesus Christ. Um, at the end, uh, um, the angel says to Jacob, let me go now, the light is coming, the dawn is coming, and so let me go. And Jacob says, uh, I won't let you go unless you bless me. And, uh, and then the angel says to him, what is your name? Do you think Jesus didn't know? what his name was? Of course he knew what his name was. So why is God asking him, what is your name? Uh, he wants Jacob to tell God, to tell Jesus what his name is and what that represents. He is Jacob the fraudster, Jacob the trickster, uh, Jacob the cheat. And uh, he tells God that. But instead of God punishing Jacob, as Jacob thought he des must have thought that he deserved, uh, God changes his name to Israel, the one who wrestles with God and overcomes. So here we have an act of grace uh, given to Jacob, uh, whose name is changed from Jacob the trickster to Israel, the one who overcomes, uh, wrestles with God and overcomes. Not that he overcomes God, but he wrestles with God and overcomes the demons in his own life, which is what happened to Jacob on that dark night. And so, what is your name? Um, abuser, trickster, cheat, liar, whatever it may be, Names can hurt, names can even kill. But at the same time, names can also bring healing and make us alive. And the name that Christ gives us makes us alive and makes us new people. Every single day, there's a clean sheet and a new name that is given to us by Christ. So... I recommend Jesus and the name of Jesus to you today to take that name with you and be Christian for 2021. You are, you will be, is the promise that God gives to us. Amen. Now may the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ be with you now and always. Amen.